Good morning participants. Now we are moving to last lecture of week 2, lecture 4. Uh, the topic of this particular lecture is single bed weft knitting machines. Uh, we are still continuing the same topic, uh, flat bed and circular bed machines, but some of the topics I have missed. So that's what some of these additional topics I am going to cover in this weft knitting. So these all are related to technological developments uh, which was happened in last 50, 60 years in flat and circular machines. So uh, before I move uh, to this section, uh, let's have a quick recap of what we have covered so far. So the first thing we started uh, in this week was uh, automation of loop formation. So I introduced you the importance of needle and how the needle was responsible for making loops. Needle interacts with the cam and it follows the path of uh, cam uh, which was created by multiple cams by placing in a certain sequence and the needle butt uh, actually follows the path of uh, this cam track due to which it continues its um, loop formation process. Um, and these needles are actually placed on the bed. So a series of needles are placed uh, in the slot that is created on needle bed and that needle bed can be divided into two categories. One is flat bed. You can see here the machine is flat one and the other one is the circular bed where the cylinder um, is used where the slots was created on the curved part of the cylinder and needles are placed in a curved section. So these two categories are widely popular in weft knitting. Um, and in case of flat bed, we also have seen how needles and cams are the only responsible element which uh, helps in knitting actions. But in case of circular bed, there was additional element that was introduced that is needed for loop formation is the sinker. So in case of fabric formation in a circular bed, it is the needle and sinker that has to work together with the help of cam profile to make the loop possible. Obviously, sinker also has the butt part and needle also has the butt part. So naturally, there is a two cam system on a circular bed. One for needle movement, needle reciprocative movement and the another one for sinker reciprocative movement. So in some sense, circular knitting is different from flat knitting, not only by the uh, nature of its architecture, but also the nature of functioning because we need additional elements such as sinker and its additional cam for making fabric on a circular bed. Now let's move to some of uh, related topics uh, on single bed. Um, the first topic is uh, types of needles. So I already introduced you latch needle, but there are some other needles also popular in the world. Uh, one is beard needle and compound needles. Uh, the other relevant topic is machine gauge which is very very important because it determines the fabric densities, loop densities inside the uh, fabric. So I am going to give more emphasis on this. The third thing is the most popular single bed circular knitting machine. So there are so many circular knitting machines. We categorize this uh, or we classify these machines by different means and one of these classification includes multi feeder knitting machines. So this is the most popular one in the industry because it helps in vest formation, t-shirt formation, undergarment formation. So I'm going to give uh, introduction to multi-feeder knitting machines. Please note that all of these machines are related to single bed machines. Uh, so the bed remains single. Placements of needles is also same, but some changes are has been um, done on the machines to make the productions as per the requirement. Let's start with the type of needle uh, which is used in knitting industry. I already introduced you the latch needle, uh, each of its parts that helps in knitting process. Latch needles, the main important part is the latch itself. That's why this needle is named um, latch needle. Latch is uh, actually helping in closing the hook and opening the hook. And this action of opening and closing of latch is self-sustained because we don't need additional uh, motor or motion to open or close this latch. We have seen already how the latch is opened by the yarn itself. We have already seen how the old loop actually goes underneath this latch and closes um, it with the hook and then knock over from the surface. Latch needle is the most important one, mostly popular in weft knitting. But apart from latch needle, there are two other categories of needles 
that is used in knitting. The first one is the beard needle. So the name comes from the beard part. So we are going to introduce you these needles and their functioning. The other one is the compound needles, uh, which has two different segments. Um, and they um, are completely different. The nature of movement of compound needle is also different from latch and beard needles. So in this particular section, we are going to understand the functioning of beard needle and compound needle in a while. So let's start uh, first with the loop formation process. Just a quick recap, uh, we have already introduced you how the reciprocative movement of needle was done with the help of cam track. So, okay, the butt was engaged with the cam track and because of this uh, certain sequence was followed by the needle and due to this sequence, it was forming the loop. So, it, it started with the latch opening uh, because the needle starts raising and then the loop was cleared, then new yarn was cached and then yarn was pulled and once the latch get closed, the old loop was knocked out and then the needle descends to create the loop in this way after the job is done, it goes back to its resting positions. So the sequence was actually properly timed and the cam track was also designed depending on the amount of reciprocative movements that has to be given to latch needle. Okay? So uh, you can see here it was raising and then closing, then it was descending and then again going back to its original position. So, this we have already covered in the previous lecture. Now move to the beard needle, how the knitting action uh, is possible with the help of beard needle. So in, if you see the structure of beard needle, it is not look like uh, latch. It, it has uh, the head part uh, similar to latch needle, but it do not have latch, but it has the beard. Okay? So you can see here, this is the beard part and this beard part is flexible. Okay? So this beard part can go inside the slot and this slot is I. So once it has to close the head, this beard part, if you press this beard part, it can go inside this slot. In this way, it can hold the old loop or new loop depending on the position of the needle. Uh, once job is done, if the old loop has to come out, this beard will come out and the old loop can slide on this segment. So this segment remains same as per the latch needle which is the stem part on which old loop slides. Uh, so it remains same. Uh, after that there is no butt part which you can see here. It is only the sank. So sank is the part which helps to fix this beard needle on the machine bed. Uh, instead of bed we have the bar here on which this sank is placed. So here is a small animation. Just have a quick look how the loop is getting created with the beard needle and then we will try to understand each of these steps in detail. You can see here how there was additional element which was helping in loop formation. Then this beard was down and then old loop was slide. So the first thing yarn cached, then loop was formed, then this element was pressing this beard and then sliding was done. Uh, once again have a quick uh, recap. So you can see here it was pressing and then the loop was sliding. So you can see here the beard was placed and then knocking was done. So if you try to differentiate each of these steps, then you will be able to understand how uh, each of these steps is important and how these was created on the machine. Similar to latch needle, the reciprocation has to be done but in a certain fashion. We again have the resting position similar to latch needle where it is holding the old loop. Okay? So the first thing to catch a new loop or new yarn, this old loop has to come out from the beard and head segment. Okay? So uh, this head and beard segments, this old loop has to come out. To do so, there is a step of loop clearing in which this particular needle rises upward. So in this case, you can see the old loops comes out from the interaction of beard and head. So now the old loop position is on the stem part. Once the old loop is cleared, now this segment is free to catch the yarn. So now you can see here, this the new yarn is feed to the needle at this particular location 
and the only difference here is you can see this now the new yarn is bent. So once the yarn is present, then new yarn is actually bent in the loop form. This is done by a different elements. It is not done by the needle itself. But if you see the actioning of latch needle, it was the latch which was bending the yarn. But here, the new yarn bending was done by a different element. Okay. So once this new yarn is bent, then this new yarn is slide inside and simultaneously this beard part was pressed. So this beard was pressed with the stem part so that it can close. So the fifth step is the beard closing. After the beard is closed, this old loop slides over the beard and then knocked out. Okay. So this is how the step was done and after that the needle is still goes down to bend the yarn to create sufficient length of the loop. Once job is done, it goes back to its original position. Naturally, if you try to differentiate the functioning of latch needle and beard needle, these two steps are slightly different which was not happening when the loop was getting formed with the help of latch needle. The first different was the yarn bending. So once the straight yarn segment is present, it was a different element which was bending this yarn so that it can slide inside. So new yarn bending was done by a different element. And the second thing was uh, the pressure because uh, beard closing was done by a different element which is shown here by the rectangle. This is called pressure which presses this beard so that it can close with the stem segment. Okay? So these two steps are slightly different in the sense that uh, the latch do not require the additional elements when it is interacting with the yarn. But in case of beard needles, we need two different machine elements for doing this function. Otherwise, if you try to observe the path of the reciprocation of the needle, it remains same. It rises, then it descends and then it goes back to its original position. So the path uh, or the reciprocative movements of needle remain same. It is only the two additional elements which is uh, required because uh, the beard segment is not self actuating. It cannot automatically close itself and open itself. So we need to press it by certain element which is called the pressure. And the second thing is once the yarn is being present here, it cannot automatically slides down inside. Uh, so we need another slider or you can say another element which bends the yarn and slide it inside beard and head segments. Okay? If you see the machine, so the machine looks like this. So apart from this beard needle, it has two segments. One is the sinker part and the another one is the pressure part. If you now see carefully this animation, it is the sinker part which is taking the loop inside the beard segment. Okay? If you see again, this is the sinker part which is taking the loop inside the uh, beard part and also uh, making the sinker segment. So this sinker with the help of this portion, it bends the yarn and then it goes forward. This is the reciprocative movement of sinker. It takes that new yarn once the beard is open inside this beard and head segments. Okay? And the other thing which is required is the pressure. So you can see this is the pressure element. So if you see this animation, there was a small disc which was coming and closing this beard part. So you can see here, this is the disc, this is the pressure part which is closing this beard. So you can see here, this is the pressure. So this pressure elements is needed to close the beard and push this beard part into the eye so that the old loop and new loop is separated. So once this beard segment is closed, the old loop which is on the stem part, it can goes over the beard segment and knocked out from the needle. This is how the knitting is taken place in case of beard needle. In terms of simplicity, if you see latch needle do not require additional elements like pressure or sinker uh, on the flat bed. But in case of uh, operation with uh, 
beard needle, we need additional elements. So naturally, the space for knitting is reduced, and it causes very limited productivity. This is the reason why uh, beard needle is not now popular in uh, knitting industries. Although, uh, if you see the knitting automation, it started with the beard needle. It was the first beard needle that was invented prior to uh, latch needle. But once latch needle was introduced, uh, beard needle uh, reduces its popularities because of additional elements like sinker or pressure which is required during loop formation. So obviously, if you need more and more machine element parts in loop formation, more complexities on the machines and limited productivity. Now the beard needle is not so much popular um, in weft knitting, but still beard needle is popular in warp knitting which uh, we will going to see once we will introduce the, you the warp knitting technologies. This is how it works. Now the other type of needle is compound needle. So apart from latch needle and compound needle, compound needle has also different structure, different characteristics. So in compound needle, actually it has two segments, two different segments. One is the main body on which head is attached. This is the main body and the other part is the slider body and the slider body, the latch is attached. And these two bodies has different uh, amount of reciprocative movement. So if you see the latch needle and beard needle, the latch and beard was the part of the main body. Uh, and it was closing with the head and opening with the head. But in case of uh, compound needle, different segments was needed for the closing and opening. So the slider is a completely different segment and the main body was a completely different segment. So obviously the design is much more complicated compared to latch and beard needle. Uh, it also has different way and different style in which it does the knitting. So let's have a quick recap on the animations how it creates the loop. So you can see it is catching the yarn going inside. So you can see here it is. So the latch is there on the stem and once the needle is descending there was this latch was there which was closing with this head part so that this old loop was slides through the head part. So knocking was taking place and the latch closing was also taking place simultaneously as soon as the needle was descending. So you can see here, so this was standing on the stem part and this latch was coming out and closing with the hook part. Here is another small video from YouTube which uh, you can see and observe how the loop formation was done. So initially the old loop uh, is on the stem segment and the latch or the slider part is inside. So this slider part is inside the slot of this main body. So you can see here it is inside the slot. Once the head part of the needle from the main body, this is the head part, this head part catches the yarn and once it start pulling through the old loop, this latch comes out from the slot and closes with the hook okay and in this way this helps the latch needles to slide through this slider part and knock from the needle and get attached with the leg segments of this new yarn so here you is a small uh, animations how you can see so the first thing it is catching the uh, old loop you can see here the first part is uh, the latch is open okay by a different movement and then this old loop was cleared okay and then this new yarn was present and then the latch was closed with the head and the old loop was slide through the latch and knocked from the needle segment. So this is how the loop formation was done on a compound needles. Obviously the process is little bit complicated because we have to ensure different amount of reciprocative movement for the main body as well as the slider part. So the design is very complicated and intricate compared to latch needle machines and beard needle machines. 
here is this table uh, by which you can compare the functioning of these three types of needles which is popular in knitting industry and the first one is latch, beard and compound. So, in terms of design the latch is the most simple one, beard is also uh, comes under the simple design categories, but compound needle because it has different parts which is involved in different movements. So, that is why the design is very integrate, very complicated. Cost if you see latch needle is comparatively low and beard needle is also low cost, but compound needle is very, very expensive. The main uh, difference among these three needles is self acting. So, the hook closing which you can observe uh, by looking to the knitting principle of all these three needles, it is the latch needle, it was self acting. The closing of latch and opening of latch was done by the loop itself. But in case of beard needle, uh, you need the pressure elements that, that disc on the animations which was pressing that beard segment. So, the beard needle, you need additional elements during the loop formation. Also, if you see the compound needle, the closing of the latch part or is done by the slider itself. So, they are not self acting. So, this is why uh, because of the simplicity in terms of knitting, uh, latch needles become more and more popular in last 50, 60 years and it has almost absolute this beard and compound needle. It has replaced these two types of needles uh, from the knitting industries, especially in case of weft knitting machines. In terms of popularity, if you see in weft knitting, mostly latch needle is used and uh, beard needle and compound needle is still popular on uh, in warp knitting. Once we will cover the topic of warp knitting, uh, you will come to know about these type of needles. Uh, working speed, latch needle is very delicate because latch has to open, we have to give some time um, to pull the yarn by the needle itself. So, that is why the working speed of latch needle is very, very low compared to compound needle which is very high. Beard needle also because there are so many elements involved, so and each process takes some time. So, that is why the speed of beard needle is also low compared to compound needle. So, in terms of productivity, uh, the compound needle is can give you very high production rate. Machine gauge actually indicates how many needles you have placed per unit length. So, it is defined as number of needles per inch. And the next topic in this particular lecture is related to machine gauge. Latch needle is actually used in coarser gauge where um, you need limited number of needles to be placed on the bed. Coarser in the sense like uh, 2 gauge to almost 24 gauges, um, we use latch needle, so more coarser bed. Uh, beard needle is very fine and compound needle is also very fine. You can place this needle in a needle bar and then you can place that bar on the machine. So, very fine placements of needles is possible when you are using beard needle and compound needle. So, the distance between two needles can be made as minimum as possible with the help of beard needle and compound needle. So, finer gauge machines actually they use uh, these type of needles. Clearing height, so how much the needle rises? In case of latch needle, it is the maximum distance that the latch needle covered because it has to raise completely to clear the old loop. Uh, in case of beard needle, since you have uh, the sinker elements which was uh, helping in sliding the loop inside the beard part, um, the amount of reciprocation, actually the amplitude of reciprocation is much, much lower compared to latch needle. And in compound needle, since there is two parts, slider and uh, the main body, so if they move in opposite direction, it can very fastly closes the latch and head part. So, that is why the amount of distance which is covered by the compound needle um, is uh, much lower compared to the latch needle. Yarn stress, you have seen like how the latch needle was actually pulling the yarn strongly because once it catches the yarn, it is the head part which was interacting with the yarn and it was pulling it. So, that is why high amount of force is generated on the yarn itself. So, yarn is under high stress conditions when you are using latch needles. So, there is a more chances of breakages in case of uh, machine using latch needle. While in case of uh, beard needle, 
uh, you have seen how the sinker element was helping in loop bend formation. So, comparatively yarn stress was much, much lower. In compound needle also the yarn stress was uh, much, much lower. Uh, vibration during knitting, since uh, maximum stroke or maximum reciprocation amount was done by the latch needle, so that is why high vibration was observed uh, in case of latch needle. Uh, in case of beard needle, since the beard segment is much more flexible and longer length of metal is there, so there is high chance of vibration when it is doing the knitting action. But in case of compound needle, since the design is so robust and the metallic part is also very strong and also the stroke amount or the reciprocation or the amount of clearing height done by the uh, compound needle is less, the vibration is less observed in case of compound needle. If you see the durability, um, latch needle is rigid, it can run for 6 to 8 months depending on how simply you are running the machine. And, but in case of beard needle, it is very poor uh, and very flexible design. So, that is why it breaks very easily because the beard segment is very, very flexible. So, even a small amount of uh, jerk, it can break. And if you see the compound needle is the most strong and robust design. So, compound needle, there are less chances of breakages. Yarn rubbing, since the yarn was interacting with the uh, latch needle a lot, so very harsh treatment was done on the yarn. So, you, there is a chances of lint formation, fly formation during uh, high speed running of these machines. In case of beard needle, it was the very gentle treatment because uh, the sinker part was bending the yarn in a very gentle fashion. Also in case of compound needle, very gentle treatment of the yarn. So if you are running with very delicate yarn, it is advised to use beard needle and compound needle. But latch needle is more popular in the sense because it is very simple design and self actuating. So this is some of the basic differences in these three needles. So, in the industry, if you go 90 percent of the time, you might be observing only the latch needle is used in the bed. And these two also are popular, but not so much, though it was popular 50, 60 years before, but uh, latch needle is replacing these types of needles day by day. Okay? Uh, now, we are moving to next topic, which is the machine gauge. Also, this is related to uh, each bed which is used in uh, knitting. So, machine gauge uh, in simply it is uh, defined as number of needles per unit length. So, you have seen how the needles was placed on the trick or the slot inside the bed. So, here is this bed and in each of these slot a needle is placed. So, this is the butt segment of the needle and they are placed on the bed. Naturally, the placement of these slots can be made very, very finer depending on uh, what type of tooling machines you are using. In reality, uh, machine gauge uh, is used to indicate how finer or coarser is the machine. So, number of needles which is uh, used per unit length of the bed is defined as machine gauge. It is also called as cut. Uh, it is uh, indicated by a alphabet E and by a number. So, E4 means 4 needles per inch. So, this is indicated by number of needles per inch. So, here if you can see, uh, this is the distance 1 inch and if you count how many needles, so 1, 2, 3, 4. So, in 1 inch, there are 4 needles are present. So, that is why this is called 4 gauge machine and we call it E4. So, uh, whenever uh, you are interacting with the machines, the first thing obviously you need to absorb is what is the gauge of the machine, whether it is E4, E8. E60 is also there, like 60 needles per inch. So, you can imagine in the same length, there are 60 needles are placed. So, in that case, how finer uh, is the dis distance between two needles? That is uh, also very important uh, in terms of uh, fabric quality. Uh, gauge is also referred as cut. Cut is used mostly in western countries, uh, especially in US, uh, they use cut. They also uh, indicate the same thing, how many needles uh, are used per unit length. Why this machine gauge is so important? Because depending on what type of machines you are using uh, for the fabric production, um, the fabric quality or fabric density will be decided. For example, here this is 8 cut fabric. So, here you can see for making 8 veils, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So, 8 needles was used in the same area, but for the same area you can see here in 12 cut fabric, 12 needles was used for the same width of the machine. So, naturally if you see this fabric and this fabric, this fabric number of loops in the per unit area is much much lower compared to this one where you the number of loops is much denser. So, you can count many number of loops here. So, fabric density is decided by the machine gauge itself. So, if you use finer gauge machine means it means more number of needles per unit length then you will observe denser fabric. If you use coarser gauge machine uh, where the number of needles per unit length is lesser like 4, 6, then you will observe less number of loops. So, coarser fabric. So, this two fabrics, one is coarser fabric, this one is finer fabric. So, coarser and finer depends on what type of gauge you are using on the machine itself. Whether the machine is finer gauge, then it will create finer fabric. Whether the machine is coarser gauge, then it will create a coarser fabric. So, fabric density is determined by the machine gauge. Let us see the other part, the pitch. It is actually the distance between two consecutive needles on the bed. So, you see the needles are placed on the bed and distance between two consecutive needles is called pitch. So, if you calculate the distance, here you can see in 1 inch there are 4 needles are placed. So, distance between two needles naturally will become 1 by 4. So, there is a small relation where pitch is actually 1 by gauge. So, if you know the machine gauge, you can find out the pitch. So, pitch is uh, expressed in the distance unit, uh, it is expressed in inch. For this particular machine, the pitch is the distance between two needle is 1 by 4. So, 0 0.25 inch. Why pitch is important? Because uh, depending on what is the distance or the alloyance which is given between two needles, the yarn selection has to be decided for a particular machine. So, what diameter or what count of the yarn one should use on a particular machine, this is decided by the pitch itself. So, if the pitch distance is higher, you can use much thicker yarn because the distance between two needles is uh, too much. But if the distance is narrow, especially in finer gauge machine, then you cannot use much thicker yarn. And there is a small relation which you can use to determine what type of count is suitable for a particular machine. For a single bed weft knitting machine, the cotton yarn is expressed in any um, English count. The cotton count which is used for a particular single bed weft knitting machine is, it depends on gauge square. So, machine gauge, if it is 4 gauge, then 4 into 4 divided by 18. So, this is a small relationship. So, depending on machine and depending on the fiber type, a small relation is already provided by the manufacturer itself like what type of count you can run on, the, on a particular machine without breaking the yarn. If it is very finer yarn and let us suppose if you are running very thicker yarn, then obviously there will be difficulty in the loop formation. So, the selection of yarn, the quality of fabric, it all depends on the placement and the slot size or the pitch or the gauge of the machine. So, that is why this particular topic is very, very important from the production and quality point of view. Now, move to the last segment uh, which is the uh, related to circular machine. Uh, we have already seen circular machines where needles was placed on a cylinder in the slot. The, that slot is called trick. And, but there are in the market, there are so many types of circular machines uh, you can observe and uh, their functionings are also completely different. So, I thought maybe I should classify some of these machines and at least you should be knowing these machines whenever you interact with any circular machine in future. When you see circular knitting machines, it can be divided into by three categories by knitting actions, which I already covered in the last class. The classification is done by sinker top and verge top machines rotation. So, how uh, the rotation is done on the circular machine, it can be further categorized by two ways. One is uh, cam is stationary and needle bed rotating. So, here the cam is stationary and needle is rotating and the butt is interacting with the stationary cam 
and the second one is cam is rotating and but needle bed is stationary. So the cam rotates and needle bed is stationary. The third category is, is uh, through number of feeders. So when uh, depending on number of feeders, the machines can be divided into two categories. One is single feeder machines and the other one is multi feeder machines. Okay. Now see uh, some of these the same classifications we can see here. So the first one is sinker top. So in last class also I discussed how one machine uses sinker but the other machine uses verge. So verge is the end part of this trick wall which helps in the loop formations. So we have already seen like in one type of circular machines we need sinker element during loop formations because sinker was holding, sinker was helping in knocking, sinker was also helping in holding the fabric. But in case of verge top, it is the most simple one where you don't need additional elements so the design is much much simpler and uh, the fabric is being formed so that circular machines uh, definitely uh, can be divided into two categories with one with sinker top and verge top the other way we can divide this circular knitting machine is uh, how the rotation is taking place so in first case the cam is rotating but the needle is just doing reciprocating movement in the same vertical line. Okay? So the needle is not rotating on the curved surface rather cam is rotating. So let us see this video. So here you can see this cam plate. This is rotating and needle is just doing reciprocative movements. Okay? And in the other case the cam is stationary but the needle is rotating. So here you can see the cams are placed, these are the cam system and the needle, the entire cylinder itself is rotating. Okay? So you can see here the cam is not moving, rather you can see here the cylinder is moving. So here the needle is revolving but the cam is stationary. In this case, needle is stationary, the cylinder is stationary and the cam is actually in this particular jacket, the circular one. In this way, uh, these circular machines are also divided. The last one is by the amount of yarn which is consumed by the machine. So in one case, single yarn feeder, so you can see here this is only one yarn is being used during knitting. But in case of multi feeder yarn, you can see so many yarn bobbins are placed on the top of the machine and at the same rotation all of these yarn ends are used inside this cylinder. In industry mostly uh, it depends on the how fast you can produce the fabric. So multiple yarn feeder machines are quite popular in case of circular knitting machines. So I am going to give more introduction or more description of these type of machines which is used in the market. Let us see multi feeder circular machine, why there was a need for a multi feeder circular machine, what was the science, why uh, this machines become so popular compared to single feeder machines. So if you see single feeder machines uh, from lecture 3, uh, the cam was rotating and this, this was the cam, if you see this the cam was rotating and the fabric was formed and you can see this vertical yarn which was with feed in the fabric forming zone. Okay? And if you see, uh, if you slow down this process, what you can realize is whenever the cam is interacting, you can see the needle is either raising or the sinker is going inside depending on the position of the butt, but other parts are not doing anything. So along the circumference, wherever the cam is located, only the needles and sinker interacted in that cam areas are participating in knitting actions, but rest other areas are not doing anything. They are ideal, they are waiting for the cam to go to that particular locations. If you increase the diameter, because uh, if you see single bed machines, the diameter can go from 4 inch to 50 inch. So the more and more bigger diameter you can see the cam takes sufficient times to reach to each needle sections. So in one rotation hardly uh, only segment of time is being used by 
a particular needle and rest of the time the needle is just sitting ideal. Bigger the diameter, more ideal time for the needle. So more ideal time for the needle means needle is not doing anything and the fabric will not be being formed. So there is a chance of very limited productivity when you are utilizing a single feeder uh, circular knitting machines. But to increase the uh, productivity, we can go for multi feeder circular knitting machines. So in terms of knitting principle, it remains same. The only difference is here uh, we are uh, providing more and more yarns to different segments um, on the same periphery of the machine. So because of this very high productivity of circular fabrics is achieved. This is why it is more popular in industries and they use such type of machines to produce vest, t-shirts, undergarments, sports wears at a very, very fast rate. So let us see how this particular machine works in reality. In case of single feeder, only one cam was there and the feeder was also moving with the cam. But in case of multi feeder machines, many cams was located along the circumference. So if you see the actual photo, so here these cams are placed on the cylinder. So across this curved part of the cylinder, many small, small cams was placed. So these are all cam system that is placed on the cylinder. And this particular machines, all of these cams which is placed um, around this circumference, they are stationary but the cylinder is rotating. So the entire cylinder rotates. So the beauty of this particular machine is the moment a particular needle, let's suppose if it interacts with the first cam, it does its uh, knitting cycle, it makes one loop, immediately it interacts with the second cam in the same rotation. Once it makes the loop uh, after the interaction with this particular cam, it again interacts with the third cam in the same cycle. So within one rotation, instead of making just one loop by a particular needle, each needle make multiple loops in one rotation depending on how many cams it is interacting. Okay. Let us see this video. So here is this cam. So this cam is stationary, you can see the cam is not moving but the cylinder is rotating. So this cylinder is rotating. Okay. The moment this needle interacts with this cam, it makes one loop. After that, when it interacts with this particular cam, it will create another loop. So within one revolution, it will create not just one loop but multiple loops depending on how many cams are placed on the cylinder. So if you have a much bigger cylinder, you can place multiple cams, uh, even 20, 24 or maybe 50 cams uh, depending on the size of the cylinder. So you can in just one revolution, you can create 50 loops by just one needle. Okay? This is the beauty of multi-feeder circular machines and uh, the productivity increases multifolds because of this type of arrangement. So let us see how it works. So you can hear there is another video here actual running of the fabric on this machine. So the needle is revolving. So you can see here the needle is revolving. So needle is first making loops interaction with the cam placed here. Once this needle make the loop here, it is carrying and interacting with the second cam in the same circle and then it is making loops. So in, in the same sequence, uh, depending on how many cams are placed along the circumference, it interacts and it makes the loop according to that. Now let us try to observe the needle cam profile. So each of these cams uh, which is placed along the circumference, they do the same, some kind of reciprocative movements to the needle butt uh, to make the knitting happening. Uh, is a small video you can see here. So the needle butt first interacts here and it starts rising, then again it hits this particular cam, then it rises and then it goes 
this is the the metallic part the small metallic part in each slots which you are uh, looking at they are but this particular cam segments is actually doing raising clearing and stitching so uh, these are the three cams which is located on the machine so the first one is the up throw cam or the raising cam it makes the butt to raise to certain heights and then it is hitting uh, the clearing cam so this is the resting position then it is hitting the clearing cam because of this it is rising and after that you can see here is the downward movement uh, the moment it interacts with this particular cam which is the stitch cam it is start descending and it goes back to its um, bottom most positions once the job is done by this cam immediately the needle is free to interact with the second cam system and once it makes the loop with the second cam system again it interacts with the third and so on this is the beauty how within a short span a multiple loops are being created by the same needle so let's see this video so you can see here you can see here the, the needle is raising then going down so the needle is raising then this is the resting position this is raising at the clearing point and then it is going down again raising resting position clearing then go down so in this sequence it is making the knitting now let's see how the sinker is placed so if you try to observe there is a sinker elements is also there uh, on the machine so needle cam is placed on the cylinder curved section and which is stationary and cylinder is rotating the sinker cam is placed in this plate so this is the plate on which sinker cam is placed so these two cams works together uh, at the time of uh, knitting loop so i am showing you how the sinker is placed this is the same sinker which we um, covered in the third lecture so here this is the sinker which uh, you can remove so there are so many sinkers depending on how many needle cams are placed on the circumference uh, sim the same number of sinker cam is also placed so you can see here this is the sinker so it also creates a kind of profile for sinker reciprocative movement so once the needle butt interacts here this is the raising or up throw cam then it, this is the resting position and then this is the clearing or rising position then it descends so this is how the sinker cam is placed on the machines let's see how the sinker does the movement so i hope you remember this interaction of needle and sinker so this is the sinker part so the sinker butt is here and the sinker butt interacts with this cam profile and it follows the part of the cam okay and the placement of sinker cam is like this so uh, just on the top of the needle cam the sinker cam is placed on the circular rim okay so this is the yellow one is a sinker cam plate and on each sinker cam plate a slots was created to place this sinker cam with the help of nut and bolt this is the actual machine which uh, involves the functioning of both needle sinker and the fabric so you can see here how the fabric is produced so at this location the needle is going down this location needing is at the clear most position this is the resting position the horizontal part this is the uh, rising position the needle is raised and this is the clearing position and then it is going down by the help of stitch cam the beauty of this multi feeder circular machine is none of the needle is remaining ideal for longer time the moment it completes one knitting cycle with one cam interaction it immediately follow the cam profile for the second cam which is placed on the circumference so multiple courses are formed in the same rotation due to which very high productivity is achieved and this is uh, very important from company point of view 
they can achieve very high productivity and these type of machines are used in vest development, t-shirt making, undergarments making, sports wear. Let us summarize this particular lecture. So, in this lecture uh, we still covered the single bed machines flat and circular, but we given more emphasis on the different types of needles that are used in this knitting machines. Uh, we given some importance to machine gauge and pitch because this determines the fabric quality, fabric density and the pitch decides what type of yarn uh, you can use for uh, fabric development on a particular machines. And also I have given more emphasis from the company point of view to use uh, multiple feeder um, single bed circular knitting machine because the production rate is much, much higher. So, compared to single feeder which creates just one course in one rotations, uh, here you can create multiple cores by one rotation of cylinder. So, this is why this type of machines are most popular. Uh, latch, beard and compound, uh, latch is the most popular one in uh, weft knitting, but beard and compound needles are not so much popular, uh, only they are used in warp knitting type of machines. Uh, although uh, 50, 60 years before these two types of, uh, of needles were used, but latch become very simple and it is a self actuating uh, needle. So, that is why this needle become more popular in knitting industries. We are going to stop this single bed knitting machines. In the next week, we are going to start a new type of um, uh, knitting technologies where we use two beds in the fabric productions. So, why there was a need for two beds uh, that we are going to discuss first and then uh, we will see what um, type of designs and what type of technologies are there in those type of machines. So, with this uh, I am going to stop this particular week. Um, I have designed two demos for this particular week for running flat bed machines and for running circular bed machines. So, I hope you, you will enjoy that lab demo where I am going to demonstrate you how in the lab we use or uh, we run this machine in the fabric development. So, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.